There's a particular kind of arrowhead, the chisel arrow from the Middle Neolithic. They're really odd objects. They, they don't have the refined tip of a barbed and tanged arrowhead from right at the end of the Neolithic. Well, clearly this arrow would have done a bit of damage. Can if I tilt and actually look at the wound, it's not just an arrow that's gone in and created a hole, it's actually opened up a wound channel around the arrow shaft and it's holding it open. And that's important because if this had struck an animal or a person, it would mean that that wound channel is open. So blood would be constantly coming out at this point. And that's particularly important if you don't hit a vital organ. You're wanting your prey to bleed out quite quickly so you don't have to track it for a long period of time. I'm going to try and pull this out now and really see how deep it's actually gone into this gel block. And there we go, you can see it's really gone quite an impressive depth into that. And considering the width of this arrowhead and the fact that it's not pointy at the front, that's really an impressive depth. This is why experimental archaeology is really, really valuable for trying to answer questions as to whether arrowheads like this could have actually been used for hunting, whether they were any good or whether they were just something for show or arrowheads at all.